Okay, this is 1-2D, the last notes for this section. Um, we're going to look at the exponential and logarithmic functions. So again, the characteristics of the graph are domain and range, x-intercept and y-intercept, maximum number of roots or zeros, in behavior, and whether it's a continuous or discontinuous. For the exponential function, the function, um, the parent function is f of x equals base to the x. Little b means base. Um, it can, and base for our purposes is going to be either a 2, a 10, or the letter e, which means a specific number similar to pi. The domain is all real numbers for the x's, but your range is 0, not inclusive to positive infinity. So as you can see on the graph, it looks like this graph is laying on the x-axis, but it is actually getting very, very close to that x-axis and not actually touching it or crossing it. The problem here is, is when we're looking, the problem is, is when we're looking at the um, graph and we can't zoom in, it's really hard to see that, but if we zoomed this in very closely, we would see it coming close, 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 never actually touching. So the range is all numbers of positive R, positive Y, but except for zero and nothing negative. Okay, so because it never touches the x-axis, it is a, uh, there is no x-intercept. We do want to note that the y-intercept is a very important um, point on all exponential functions. It is the one thing that every exponential function will always have in common, that at when x is 0, y will always be 1. So no matter which exponential function we have, whatever the base is, it won't change the fact that it will always go through 0, 1. There is a maximum number of zeros of 1, and that is only when it has been shifted down. So when there has been a uh, when this graph has been moved down below the x-axis, so it's say coming down here to negative five and then growing up, at that point you will have a x-intercept, but not the parent function. In behavior, as x goes to negative infinity, the y approaches but never touches zero. Um, as x goes to positive infinity, the y's go to positive infinity. And it is continuous, even though there is a limitation on your uh, range. So what is the domain of this exponential function? If you chose all real numbers, you'd be right. In fact, on every exponential function, the domain will always be all real numbers. Doesn't matter where it is moved on the graph, the domain will never change. What is the range of this exponential function? If you chose y is greater than 0, then you would be correct. Um, and that will change depending on if it shifts up or down. It won't change left or right, but it does shift up or down. So what is the range of this exponential function? If you chose that y is greater than negative 2, you'd be correct. And here's what I was talking about previously. This The parent function was shifted down by 2, so the range is also shifted down to negative 2. What is the domain and range of this function? So in this case, it is all real numbers and the range is still greater than 0. So even though this has been moved to the left by a, quite a bit, it is not going to be a function of um, the domain and range are not going to be changed because it didn't go up or down, so the range doesn't change. And just because it went left or right, and it's, uh, it won't change because all real numbers. It is important to note that 0, 1 point that I was talking about before, which would have been right here on, your gra on the graph on the parent function, it is the point that you'll use to determine how much it has been shifted left or right. And we'll talk about that more in 1-3. Okay, so a logarithmic function is log base b of x. Um, b, again, is the base. It represents 2, 10, or e. And x is the value of x that you would put in. Um, and we will talk about how logarithmic and um, 
exponential functions are actually opposites of each other, similar to addition and subtraction or multiplication and division. But as you can see, we have the logarithmic, and it almost looks like the exponential, but it has been turned on its side. And by doing that, it changes its domain and range. Actually, it flips them. So now we can only start at zero, but not include zero as a domain. You can't put zero in here. It's a no-no. But you can go to positive infinity. You cannot put a negative number into a logarithmic function. But you can get all positives and negatives of, as your answers for the range. So the range and the domain of a logarithmic has flipped from what it was for the exponential. And all the other uh, attributes basically flip as well, including the x-intercept is now that special point 1, 0, where before on the exponential it was 0, 1. So now they've flipped. And there is never going to be a y-intercept of the parent function. If it's moved left or right, then that would change. In fact, if it moves left or right, then you could get a 0. You could get a y-intercept. Um, exponent in behavior as x moves towards zero gets closer and closer to this y inter uh, y axis the f of x will go to negative infinity as x goes to positive inf uh, infinity the f of x will go to positive infinity and it is continuous so what is the domain of this logarithmic function If you chose that x is everything bigger than negative 5, you'd be correct. So remember when we're looking for domain, we go from left to right and come to where we see our first point where we can actually touch the, um, the function. In this case, we're actually coming to the asymptote that is formed by the wall that this function cannot cross. And that's how we get our domain here. So we actually are coming all the way across until we get to negative 5 where we see a wall. That tells us our domain. And it is not equal to negative 5 because, notice it's a dotted line, which means um, it is not something you can, uh, is included. So what is the range? If you chose all real numbers, you'd be right. And again, that's when we start from the bottom for range. We're looking for the first thing we can touch, and that is an arrow. And then we keep going, keep going, until the last thing we can touch, again, is an arrow, so all real numbers. Okay, and this is just a summary of all of the um, functions that we are looking at this year, the equations that go to those, and their domain and range. Um, please note that uh, linear, absolute value, quadratic, cubic, cubed root, and exponential functions all have all real numbers. So on all those particular functions, left, right will not change their domains. On rational, square root and logarithmic, the domains have a potential for change. On the range side of it, linear, cubic, and cubed root, as well as logarithmic, all have ranges that will not change. The rest of them have a potential for changes on their range if the uh, function has moved up or down. So we'll talk more about translations and transformations as well as opposites called inverses in the next couple of sections.